My name's John W. Thomas Bird. I'm a native Nashvilleian and third generation physician to serve this community. I attended Vanderbilt University School of Medicine as did my father and his father before him. Nashville is known as the Athens of the South because it was the cultural and educational center of this part of the country. I'm named after my great-great-grandfather, Major John W. Thomas, who ran the railroad here back in the late 1800s and also oversaw the Tennessee Centennial Celebration for which they built an exact replica of the Parthenon. In addition to country music, the Parthenon remains an emblem of our town, and you'll see the Parthenon in our logo. As far as the godfather of hip arthroscopy, yes, I've heard that. I'm flattered, although I've never figured out exactly who they is. Whether I am or not is for others to judge, but I do try to bring a sense of temperance and responsibility for surgeons taking on the role of hip arthroscopy. This field is rapidly changing and evolving, and it's important that we're smart in the things that we do. Unfortunately, we can't solve everyone's difficulties, and surgery is not always a fix. I performed my first arthroscopic hip procedure here in Nashville in 1990. There was a teenager with loose bone fragments in his hip. Another surgeon was gonna do a big open operation and take the fragments out, and asked if there's any way I might be able to fish these out with the arthroscope. I'd never heard of such a thing, but applying the basic principles of knee and shoulder arthroscopy that were taught to me by my mentor, Dr. James Andrews, we devised a way to retrieve these and it worked. Later, we published that technique in 1994, and that's become the foundation for the way that most people perform hip arthroscopy around the world. In the mid-1990s, I devised a set of instruments for reliably performing hip arthroscopy. It's based on a cannulated system, which simply means that we can put a small needle into the joint over which we can pass various instruments for performing the things that we want to do. Others have copied this set, but that basic set has remained the most popular used worldwide. As an aside, I've never profited a nickel from those instruments. When this field was in its infancy, I was just happy that someone would develop a set that I could use I believe I was a little short-sighted on where this may be heading. There's none of these things that we've accomplished that I set out to do. There are simply things in the way that my practice evolved out of necessity. I didn't wake up one morning and have this wild idea of how to put an arthroscope in a hip. Uh, the very first case we did for a youngster, while well, their alternatives were not very attractive to subject him to a big open operation and, and usually perhaps a week in the hospital. Uh, just compared to doing that, it seemed to make sense to try. Dr. Andrews taught me the art and the philosophy of sports medicine. Maybe more importantly, he taught me how to treat regular folks like they're special and how to treat special people like they're regular folks. Looking after the, the Tennessee Titans is my weekend job. That's something I started in 1997. Uh, it, it really doesn't take that much of your practice, it really takes up your family time because it's the weekends and my wife knows more about football than I ever would and my family's really into it and that's important as a team physician. Your family needs to be part of it because it, it's your family life that can suffer if you get too focused on it. Our organization is excellent uh, and it treated my whole family like family for, for decades. I feel very blessed that we've had an opportunity to be able to look after complex and unusual hip disorders of all types. But those hips come attached to patients, uh, they come attached to people who have their own lives that they're trying to live. So our level of care isn't just looking after the hip, but it's how that hip disorder affects that patient and that patient's life and everything around them. It's interesting because we have a lot of folks who fly in here on their private jets and they spend more on jet fuel than they'll ever actually be spending here for their health care. And we look after other people who are saving up gas money to be able to come visit us. And we, we try to think that we look after all those on an equal level. I, I can tell you that I've learned more from patients and their experiences and the things that they've taught me through the years than I probably have from a lot of lectures and from other surgeons around the world.